it's, it's one of those diseases that keepers freak out about. I would venture a guess that most tortoises in captivity have mica. Now, that was a lot of doom and gloom, and I want to give you guys the upside. What's going on everyone? Ken in here. Trust me, it's me. I'm just uh, infatuated by my leopard tortoises this afternoon. These guys are amazing and they're an incredible species, uh, but we have questions to get to and it actually pertains to these amazing tortoises and tortoises in general. Thank you to our amazing supporters who help to make this show possible every week. Your support makes a real difference in our efforts here at Camp Kennan. This week, a special shout out goes to Kenneth Buteau. Thank you for all you do and for loving reptiles. And today's question comes from Ross Parnagian. Uh, he says, uh, I have a small group of leopards. Hey, go figure. He has a small group of leopard tortoises and two of them have come down with an upper respiratory infection. I'm currently treating them with heat and antibiotics and have also quarantined them. The vet has told me once they have it in their system, it truly never leaves the system. Is this true? And if it's true, is it really safe to reintroduce them into uh, the colony, back into the colony? All right, thanks, uh, Ross. Very good. We're going to get into a lengthy discussion here today, and I'm going to walk around as I talk, so I hope you guys don't mind. We're going to see most of the tortoises, I guess. Uh, but anyway, when we're talking about upper respiratory infections in tortoises, um, they can be caused by uh, bacteria, viruses. Uh, they can also, you can start getting respiratory infections uh, with problems in the intestines, uh, secondary infections, as we found out when we talked to my buddy, uh, Sam Piscucci. Um, so you gotta first figure out what is causing the upper respiratory infection, okay? And it sounds like you did the right thing, you went to the vet. Now, if you do go to the vet, the vet's probably going to check for something called mycoplasmosis, mycoplasm. It's a type of bacteria, uh, and that bacteria uh, can infect different tortoises, uh, some crocodiles, some alligators, uh, and also there have been reports of Burmese pythons being infected by mycoplasmosis. But in turtles and tortoises, it'll manifest as a, a nasal discharge and myco, as it's, as it's kind of uh, abbreviated in the tortoise nerd uh, realm, which is, I guess, where we are, uh, myco is something of, it, it's, it's one of those diseases that keepers freak out about. Um, that being said, I would venture a guess that most tortoises in captivity have myco. Um, myco seems to uh, occur uh, in captive tortoises, believe it or not. And that is why it is so important. And look at this guy's having a little nibble of some uh, traveler's palm. One fell down and he got it before I got all of it out. That's cool. It's not poisonous or anything. I'm just always happy to see them nibbling on natural foods. Um, but anyway, back to mycoplasm. So myco uh, is a chronic disease, okay? And uh, you're correct, your vet is correct. If the upper respiratory infection is caused by the mycobacterium, uh, it is pretty much incurable. Uh, it's very rare to eliminate myco. Uh, basically, myco lives, that bacteria is gonna live in the very complex nasal passageways that tortoises possess. And to treat it, you're gonna use antibiotics, you're gonna do nasal flushes, and of course, keeping the animal calm, keeping the animal comfortable, and making sure uh, that all their environmental needs are met. Now, the thing is with myco, and diseases in general, uh, animals, including human beings, get diseases when they are run down. So when you get run down, if you're being kept in a stressful situation, like so many captive turtles and tortoises, uh, can be kept in uh, before they reach their final destination of somebody's home, what happens is all these animals are piled on top of each other uh, many times. That's why I'm always talking about captive raised animals. Um, most of the myco is from captive animals that have been imported, that have been kept in filthy, filthy conditions uh, during the transport process of getting from the wild 
to holding pens, and then finally on to uh, pet stores. And then you buy them, and the animal's been sick now for a while. And myco is extremely contagious to other turtles and tortoises. It's uh, actually found in the mucus uh, that they discharge. So tortoises say hello to each other by sniffing each other's noses. So if they sniff each other's noses, they're immediately going to infect another tortoise. And that is the problem. So that's why most zoos do quarantine for six months. Uh, I like to do some quarantine here for at least three months, um, unless I know exactly where the tortoise came from and I know the collection. Um, but even still, you're taking a risk. Uh, myco, being a bacteria, uh, you know, it doesn't have a cell wall. So the good news is that it doesn't have a cell wall. Uh, it won't survive outside of the body or its host uh, for quite a long time. It won't, it won't survive very long. Um, but the other problem is, is that, like I said, that mucus, when wet, it is extremely communicable and the other animals can easily get it. Um, myco can cause, when it gets full blown and it rears its ugly head uh, and causes an upper respiratory, we got a big old bamboo here. I was just looking, I think there's a uh, squirrel up there. I'm like that dog in Ice Age, because I'm in the middle of a thought, I hear a noise, and I start looking up there, and then I almost forget what I was talking about. But don't worry, because I can multitask, sort of. Kate would disagree. But I'm going to get back to the business here. Hey, what's up, Hercules? Um, so yes, myco. Uh, myco will cause lethargy. It'll cause discharge. Uh, if the animal's had it for a while and it's not been treated, uh, what will then happen is the animal will start to lose weight. So in really aggressive cases, uh, to try and cure them. A feeding tube's got to be put in, um, like we did with uh, Lumpy, uh, because as we know, seeing what he went through with his dehydration, uh, it's once a tortoise decides it's not going to eat anymore or not drink, if you do not get a feeding tube in that animal, ASAP, look at Lumpy, speak of the devil. Lumpy, I'm going to have to start putting you back, buddy. He's left the warehouse and now I would say this is a very healthy tortoise. I think we're going to put him back into uh, the main colony. So that's a video for another time. Uh, do me a favor. Don't dig too deep. I'm going to come back here. I don't want you to collapse any of these, uh, these cement walls on you, bud. Okay? I know you're tough, but just do me a favor and not do that. It's like having children that never grow up and leave. You know, I don't want him to leave. I just want to make sure he's okay. You notice how I keep all the different tortoises separate here, uh, with the exception, of course, of uh, the Aldabra and the Galops here. They're two different species that are cohabitating. And if I do cohabitate different species of turtles and tortoises, it's usually from the same geographic location. Um, so therefore, it doesn't really... Um, I try and keep it natural in that way, animals that they would interact with in the wild. Here is Darwin. Now, back to myco. The thing with myco is, uh, to my knowledge, um, it seems to really be a problem with terrestrial turtles and tortoises. Um, I've only seen it in turtles in box turtles. I've not seen it in any other species personally. That does not mean it does not exist. But, um, you know, it's one of those things that uh, can transfer from a box turtle to a tortoise, which is why I always say keep tortoises with tortoises. Um, you know, again, unless they're from a similar habitat or same uh, geographic range. So look at Darwin, how beautiful she is. Um, anyhow, Myco, and uh, again, I'm trying to just give you all the information that I have on Myco. Uh, it can be treated with antibiotics. Uh, feeding tube if necessary, keeping the animal warm. But the most important thing is once you get it under control, uh, it's very important that you, um, you keep the animal's stress levels down. Now, how do you stress out a tortoise, huh? How do you do it? Uh, one of the ways you can stress out an animal, a reptile or a tortoise, is to keep them in an area that is not conducive to their physiology, to what they're used to, to the range they're from. Humidity requirements are important. We've got to make sure that the animal's heating requirements and lighting requirements are met. And of course, diet and exercise as well. Um, I don't like to handle the tortoises too much. 
Um, you know, these animals are basically, are you gonna bite my khakis? Is that what you're going for? You're in the mood for khaki. Carhartts, is that what you want? That's not part of your natural diet, so we're not gonna let this animal get it. But um, that's one way you can keep the animals okay. Now, here's the deal. Remember earlier I said most turtles and tortoises in captivity, or are you gonna step on my foot too, kid? Come on. Uh, have Micah. Um, that being said, most of them get along just fine. As long as their requirements are met, they're not stressed out, they're living properly. Let's go through this jungle. Then it's really not gonna manifest itself in a negative way. You'll see this uh, myco in colonies of gopher tortoise uh, here in Florida, and um, also in another gopher species, uh, the desert tortoise, Gopher sagazizi. Um, that can be a problem for those animals, I'll tell you why. Um, the reason they are having this problem, this upper respiratory disease, this mycoplasm, hello sweetie, you can touch my nose, I don't have myco. There you go. Uh, the reason you're seeing it in these animals uh, is because people move them around, keep them as pets, then let them go. And they may be keeping these animals in filthy conditions, uh, then decide they don't want the pet tortoise anymore. And what do they do? They let them go where these animals then interact with healthy members of their own species and it's now spread into that population and it's a bummer because with the desert tortoise in particular and the gopherus uh polythemus the gopher tortoise um these are animals that are endangered uh so we don't want to wipe them out um it's it's something that's you know why we always stress never letting go captive animals and never taking animals out of the wild and keeping them as pets because you wind up uh, doing more harm than good. Um, the gophers are also susceptible to it because those animals brumate. Okay, they go dormant, and when these animals go dormant, they're really relying on their stores to uh, take them through the winters uh, in their respective habitats, and. I don't care if an animal's completely healthy. Hibernation or brumation is a stressful time on an animal because uh, only the strong make it through brumation. Um, but when they, are, when they wake up, they are in a weakened state. They haven't eaten for months. They haven't drank for months. They have been pushed to the absolute limits of their physiology. Uh, they need to get out there and, and build themselves back up. But if they get this problem, this mycoplasm, and if it flares up, what'll then happen is uh, the tortoise will not be able to recuperate from brumation. And that could be obviously a disaster for them. Uh, as I sit here, I am being converged upon in the woods by the tortoises. They know where I am at all times. Uh, and look at this race, where, who's gonna win? Who's gonna make it first is, oh, Darwin's gonna edge out uh, Socrates for the uh, funnel that we have here between the palmetto and the pine tree. Uh, well, oh wait, maybe not. She can step on you. Hey, Socks, just look out, cause she's a big girl. Don't get in the way of a big woman. <laughs> Especially if she thinks there's food here. That's not funny. Anyway, um, and Darwin won, by the way. Uh, so anyhow, it's something that you really should watch out for. Now, that was a lot of doom and gloom. This is already a 13 minute video roundabout, and uh, I wanna give you guys the upside. Um, if you treat the myco, if you test for the myco, okay, Ross, make sure um, that, it, that, it, that you do in fact have myco, because you could potentially have something else causing a nasal discharge and causing an upper respiratory problem. Um, if you do in fact have myco, I would keep those two tortoises separated and I would invest in testing the other animals in the colony. Now, if they all have myco, keep them all together. Uh, keep them happy, keep them fed, they'll live just happily, uh, happy tortoises. And since they're leopards, they're not gonna hibernate. Just keep them warm. And if you do get a tortoise that gets run down and gets sick, uh, get onto the antibiotics and get to the vet ASAP and get those animals into treatment. But as we've seen with turtles and tortoises, uh, they take a long time to get better. So treatment is gonna last around about 60 days. So that's two months of serious treatment with those animals. Uh, Darwin, sweetheart, I love that you are so active, my love. Um, she's getting a lot of exercise and uh, there you have it. So, all right, I think we had a really good discussion 
albeit one-sided, but we can talk in the comments below about mycoplasm. And uh, I think that you shouldn't freak out much like people will freak out about some pyramiding. Uh, myco could potentially be in 80% of captive uh, tortoises, depending on where they're coming from. Uh, don't freak out. Always keep your animals separate by species. Always do a quarantine and that should yield a very good, uh, it's, it's just good husbandry uh, and it's a good way to kind of minimize the effects of myco. Uh, you could get really intense and have bleach pads that you step your feet into to kind of disinfect as you move from one location to another. Uh, that being said, uh, outdoors here, it's hard for to have true biosecurity because, gosh, a flood could come by, a lizard, a frog, anything could hop between enclosures and potentially spread uh, some kind of communicable disease. So best thing to do is to uh, get to the vet, get that test. They do a swab of the mucus and they test it for myco. And at least you'll know what the tortoises have and what you're gonna need to be doing uh, for their long-term care. And they will survive with myco as long as you don't let it flare up and go untreated. There you have it, mycoplasm. Something that every tortoise keeper should know about. And now you guys know. And I just have to show you this face. What do you say? Hey, listen, if you like the video, leave a comment, let me know. Uh, don't forget to go to patreon.com. Join us over there for more original content, videos you won't see anywhere else. Plus my live shows have moved over there. We've been having fun. It's a nice intimate way to chat with you all. Uh, you gonna eat that too? Good, take a taste of everything, dear. Such is life. You should try a little bit of everything as long as it doesn't hurt you. Uh, yeah, man. So go on over there and you can also get your questions answered right here on the channel, but go to patreon.com uh, slash Cam Cannon first. Or is it Patreon? Yeah, patreon.com slash Cam Cannon. That's me. God, I'm goofy. Anyway, I'm gonna just hang out with my tortoises and uh, enjoy them. And I hope you're enjoying your day too. Thanks for joining me. And I'll talk to you very, very soon. I'm kind of peaceful.